Good evening, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome back to the 2020 election night coverage right here on the Riley King Network. Um, just before we went to commercial break, we told you about this. We want to just tell you about it again. AP just called President Trump wins Kentucky and Joe Biden wins Vermont. That is what the AP is saying, the Associated Press. And Pierre Thomas from ABC News is saying on FBI concern, if we don't know who the president is for a couple of days, they expect and anticipate that we will see foreign nations and others try to stoke disinformation and chaos and undermine the democracy. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News and Pierre Thomas. ballot watch headquarters right now. Pierre Thomas, our senior justice correspondent, is there. We know that the Homeland Security FBI were on alert in the days preceding the election and all day long for any possible intimidation at the polls, any possible violence. George, and we actually saw some intimidation in play today. The FBI is investigating the fact that robocalls went out to voters in about six states to include Ohio and Michigan. In those calls, they told voters, stay at home and be safe, basically telling them not to go to the polls. So the FBI is investigating, and we know that's what they're concerned about tonight and in the days coming. If there's not a quick result known, if we don't know who the president is for a couple days, they expect and anticipate that we will see foreign nations and others try to stoke disinformation and chaos and undermine the democracy. But to be clear, the process pretty orderly today, Pierre. Pro the process was orderly, and a lot of law enforcement officials I spoke to today were very thankful they did not see any sort of violence. It seems like people were able to vote easily and without any problems. Again, that is the concern going forward, just disinformation about whatever the results will be. Okay, and there you go. You heard it from ABC News and Pierre Thomas right there. So, um, two New Hampshire towns voted earlier today. Dixville Notch and Mills Field voted early at midnight. And let's see those results. In Dixville Notch for U.S. President, Joe Biden got five votes. Donald Trump got zero votes. In Dixville Notch for Governor, Chris Sununu got four votes and Dan Felsett got one vote. For U.S. Senate in Dixville Notch, Gene Shaheen got four votes. Corky Messner got one vote. For U.S. House District 2, Annie Custer got four votes in Dixville Notch, and Steve Nagron got one vote. And over in Mills Field, for U.S. President in Mills Field, Donald Trump got 16 votes, and Joe Biden got five votes. In U.S. Senate for Mills Field, Quarky Mesner got 15 votes and Jean Shaheen got 7 votes. And for U.S. House District 2, Steve Negron got 17 votes in Mills Field and Annie Custer got 5. And for Governor in Mills Field, Chris Zanuna got 22 votes and Dan Feltz got 0 votes. And that was from midnight voting from those two towns. They were the first towns in New Hampshire to vote today. So, um... An official from Claremont, Ward 2, Biden, 1157, and Trump, 1030, Shaheen, 
1281 and Mesner 891. Unofficial from Wakefield, Sununu 2493, Phelps 669, Epping, Sununu 3101, Phelps 1134. Unofficial from New Loudoun. Biden, 2025. Trump, 1056. Sununu, 1706. Phelps, 1360. And Shaheen, 2016. Mesner, 1036. Custer, 1913. And Negron, 114. Moore, Concord, Ward 5, Custer, 1907, Negron, 661. Concord, Ward 5, Trump, 643, Biden, 1944, Phelps, 1524, Sununu, 1060, Shaheen, 1989, and Mesner, 584. First results from Bow, New Hampshire. Governor Sununu, 3423, and Dan Feltz, 2012. Just in a turnout news from Summersworth City Council. Summersworth Ward 3 just broke above the total 2016 ballots cast with 1,104 ballots cast today, including most slash all in absentee in various 1,003. And, um, let's listen in to, oh, we got key results from Epping, New Hampshire. Shaheen, 2213, and Mesner, 2075. Let's listen in to some coverage from WMUR News 9. Let's watch some of that right now. Campaign headquarters in Philadelphia. We heard from both candidates today. Now, I'm not thinking about concession speech or acceptance speech yet. Uh, hopefully, I will be only doing one of those two. Losing is never easy. Not for me, it's not. If you elect me, I'm going to be an American president. There's going to be no red states or blue states. Get the United States for that. President Trump is watching the results from the White House. Former Vice President Biden is in Wilmington, Delaware. In studio, just Moran WMUR News 9. According to polling data, the closest race in New Hampshire tonight appears to be in the 1st Congressional District, where first-time Republican candidate is challenging the Democratic incumbent. Our live team coverage continues with that race. Let's start with Jennifer Crofton, who is live in Manchester with Congressman Chris Pappas' campaign. Pappas is a Manchester native, a Harvard graduate who has helped run his family's restaurant, the Puritan Backroom, for many years. But before he was elected to his first term in Congress, Pappas served on the Executive Council. The 40-year-old supports a woman's right to choose and wants to protect Social Security and Medicare and believes that the strong turnout today is great for our democracy. And I hope what happens here is that we come together closer as a nation. We've got to focus on solving problems, taking care of health care and our economy, meeting this pandemic head on. And we can only do that with leadership that understands New Hampshire, knows how to deliver results. He's hoping for a second term, and that's something that hasn't happened consecutively for either party in this district for over a decade. Now we're going to check in with Matt Maurer's campaign and my colleague, Tim Coward. Well, Jen, supporters of Matt Mowers is starting to uh, arrive here at the Doubletree Hotel here in downtown Manchester. Today, Mowers was back out on the campaign trail trying to reach as many voters as possible before the polls close. Now, he's never held public office before, but he got a start in politics down in New Jersey under former Governor Chris Christie's administration. 
In 2013, Mowers was hired as the New Hampshire Republican Party Executive Director. He also recently served in the Trump State Department. Now, he's received a lot of support from his party. He even secured an endorsement from President Trump well before September's Republican primary. He's hoping to carry that success through tonight's general election. And if elected, he says the first item on the Mowers agenda is the ongoing pandemic. We're going to have to uh, recover from this pandemic, get our economy going. That also means moving critical manufacturing from China back here to the United States. I look forward to also working with Governor Sununu to get our economy going, get people back to work. And Mowers told me this afternoon that he feels good about tonight, and he thinks he has a chance to flip the CD1 seat from blue to red. Reporting live in Manchester, I'm Tim Callery, WMUR News 9. In the second congressional district, voters are choosing between the same candidates they, they saw two years ago. And we are live with both campaigns tonight. We go first to WMUR's Mike Cronin, who is following Congresswoman Custer's campaign for us. Mike? Well, the incumbent Democrat Annie Custer will watch the results come in tonight from her Hopkinton home, and uh, she has represented the second congressional district for the past eight years. Custer spent voting day visiting Kane and Hanover, saying there is energy for her campaign, as well as all the Democrats down the ballot. Representative Custer says she wants to improve the Affordable Care Act by adding a public option. She wants to lower the cost of prescription drugs and fight climate change. Custer is confident about this race. I feel good about it. There's a very, very high turnout, and I'm excited because I think those are voters who really want to change at the top. I think they're motivated by the presidential, and they're looking to Joe Biden and Kamala Harris for a change. Custer facing a familiar opponent in this race. For more on the Negron campaign, let's go live now to Sharice LeClaire in Nashua. Well, Mike, we caught up with Steve Negron as he campaigned in his home city of Nashua this afternoon. He says he feels a lot of energy around his campaign this year. He spoke to voters outside New Searles Elementary School today. The Air Force veteran served one term in the New Hampshire House before throwing his hat in the race for the second congressional district in 2018. While he says he didn't come away with the victory then, he believes he laid a groundwork with name recognition. He's also coming off of a President Trump endorsement. The president tweeting out this weekend that he completely and totally supports Negron, which Negron thinks has energized voters. I think when you go to all these polling locations like we've gone through, um, people are out in, in droves. And I think he has actually energized the base, energized the conservatives and the Republican Party. You've seen his rallies, you know, and so I think it has helped to say, you know, we want to be part of this movement. So I'm just unbelievably excited. Negron and his team and his family will be watching those returns come in tonight from the Courtyard Marriott here in Nashua. Live in Nashua, I'm Cherise LeClaire, WMUR News 9. Okay, let's get a look at the other question on Capitol Hill tonight. This is the race for New Hampshire's U.S. Senate seat. So, Adam, what should voters look out for in this 2020 race? Well, Tom and Jen, of course, the control of the U.S. Senate is one of the subplots of this election night. Obviously, so many eyeballs trained on the Trump versus Biden battle, but really the fight over the U.S. Senate is crucial as well to what happens in Washington over the next two to four to six years as those seats are elected. Of course, here in New Hampshire, we have incumbent two-term Senator Gene Shaheen running for re-election. And it's important to note something structural about this race that has nothing to do with either candidate. Uh, when it comes to U.S. Senate races, it's actually very difficult to unseat an incumbent U.S. Senator after they've won two terms. That's why you saw in 2014 such a concerted effort by Republicans to try to get Senator Shaheen out of there. If you can't get an incumbent senator out after that first term, it becomes much more difficult to unseat them moving forward. So, of course, a very tall order for Corky Messner, uh, the Republican challenger here, who won a hard-fought primary against General Don Bolduc. Uh, Messner, of course, a businessman who spent most of his career and life in Colorado. He has a home here in New Hampshire. He has run against Shaheen, calling her D.C. Jean Shaheen, trying to paint her as someone who has spent too much time in Washington in her two uh, terms there. Of course, the retort from Senator Shaheen uh, saying, yes, Corky Messner is an outsider. He's someone from outside the state. That's her quote. This all kind of culminated in a very fiery Granite State debate that we had here a couple of weeks ago where we got to see some real punches
was thrown back and forth. It was interesting, something we may not have seen in an in-person debate, the fact that Senator Shaheen had to go back to uh, Washington for a vote on a stimulus package. Uh, they were in boxes next to each other, and they really got into a big scrum there. We'll see how that plays out with the voters. Obviously, the polls have consistently favored Senator Shaheen. Uh, anything can happen tonight, but it's going to be a very tall order, Tom and Jen, for Corky Minister to pull off the upset. So, and as we've, sorry, Tom. Yeah. Uh, as we've gotten to know Corky Messner a little bit more, Adam, we did have some questions. If the night does not go his way tonight, would he stay in New Hampshire and become more of a political figure here? He did talk to a reporter today, and he said, yes, he will. He plans to, in fact, set up a PAC to help other Republican candidates. Yeah, that's right. And I think, you know, when you see people run statewide, they see some of the deficiencies. They'd like to help out, you know. Uh, the, um, the NHGOP has always been trying to grow and get bigger and try and compete uh, at a level that the NHDP, the New Hampshire Democratic Party, does. So certainly uh, if Mesner is sticking around and investing here, that's something that could help Republicans moving forward. Uh, we'll see what happens, though. And there was no love lost between uh, Corky Mesner and Don Bulldog in the primary campaign. Don Bulldog having a lot of the backing of the establishment Republicans. Yeah, that was a, a really bitter fight, and we saw initially Don Bolduc say that he was not going to support Corky Mester, and then he came around at one of the Republican Unity events, uh, and the hatchet was buried there, essentially. And, and it should be pointed out, very unique, because of the um, coronavirus pandemic, the whole primary process was kind of thrown into disarray. A lot of the events, and the Republicans did a lot of events they normally would have, but you saw a lot of outcomes in towns and cities that were just wild. You know, Londonderry breaking one way uh, for one candidate, Nashville breaking another way. So very inconsistent across the board. Hard fought primary. Hard to say if that's going to be hurting Mesner here tonight. The biggest obstacle for him is how long voters in New Hampshire have been voting and checking that box for Gene Shaheen mm -hmm. over the decades. Okay, very good, Adam. Thanks so much. Some seasoned campaign surrogates have a unique perspective on the candidates. Coming up next, here from family members of Colonel. Okay, and there you go on that video. And we got some more updates. Um, the AP has announced that Donald Trump wins West Virginia. And also the AP announced that Joe Biden wins Virginia. Also, um, we're hearing that President Trump finally winning somewhere takes Boss Quinn 1,062 to 925 and Laquini Ward 2,665 to 584. And New Hampshire Public Radio is saying with just over 1% of the precincts reporting, Governor Sununu has an early lead over his Democrat challenger Dan Phelps. Get real time results in New Hampshire from New Hampshire Public Radio. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Do not go anywhere. Stay with us for updates. 